in this uh, topic we study the development of anterior abdominal wall diaphragm and uh, the related congenital anomalies so first we'll start with the development of the anterior abdominal wall a new anatomical description of the anterior abdominal wall has been given recently it describes each abdominal aponeurosis as bilaminar and each wall of rectus sheath as trilaminar fibers of all aponeurotic layers cross the midline to form digastric muscles with the corresponding aponeurotic layers of the opposite side theories some authors describe the thoracic myotomes as extending ventrally to form ventrolateral muscles of thorax and abdomen recently snell stated that abdominal muscles differentiate from mesenchyme of the somatopleur differentiation of the mesoderm differentiation of the mesoderm into fleshy bellies an intermediate aponeurosis starts at the 18th day digastric abdominal muscles do not result from fusion of the two lateral sets of abdominal muscles but develop as differentiation within one digastric mesodermal primordium already established splitting of the main dorsal segment of the migrating mesoderm into three layers starts early that is on the 14th day relative thickness of the three layers shows marked similarity to the corresponding muscles of the adult man it is arranged in descending order of the thickness as interoblique extraoblique and transverse abdominis further splitting of each of the three muscles into two laminae was noticed as occurring temporarily and for a short period which was followed by the fusion of the two laminae in the period between 15th and 17th day this is comparable to the fact that in man and in many other mammals each abdominal aponeurosis is bilaminar temporary tangential splitting of the rectus abdominis is also comparable to the splitting of the rectus abdominis of the kangaroo in which muscle is formed by two layers superficial d it is suggested that the superficial rectus regresses along the scale of evolution into the pyramidalis muscle which is big in apes but rudimentary and occasionally absent in the man trilaminar plywood arrangement a trilaminar plywood arrangement was noti noticed in each wall of the human rectus sheath the study observations on the rat embryo showed that during histogenesis the elongated cells and lateral muscle fibers orient themselves in a similar plywood arrangement thus the particular direction and orientation of the abdominal muscle fibers are most probably genetically rather than the mechanically determined tendinous intersections the fact that the tendinous intersections were not seen except postnatally suggests that they are not representative to the original segmentation of the myotomes but rather represent some sort of intermediate tendons of a multigastric longitudinal column of the muscle then we go to development of the development and congenital anomalies of the diaphragm the diaphragm is a musculotendinous dome shaped partition between the thoracic and abdominal cavities and develops from four major structures septum transversum so septum transversum is the most important component it forms the central tendon it is first seen as a thick mesodermal plate cranial to the pericardial cavity septum 
does not separate thoracic and abdominal cavities entirely. It becomes a thick incomplete partition between the cavities with an opening on each side of the gut and pleural canals. Septum fuses dorsally with the primitive mediastinal mesenchyme below the esophagus and later with the pleuroperitoneal membranes. Pleuroperitoneal membranes fuse with the dorsal mesentery of the esophagus and with the dorsal part of the septum transversum to complete the partition between the thoracic and abdominal pelvic cavities to form the primitive diaphragm. They represent only a small portion of the final adult structure. Dorsal esophageal mesentery. A dorsal esophageal mesentery fuses with both septum transversum and this mesentery forms the median portion of the diaphragm. The crore of the diaphragm develops from muscle fibers which grow into the esophageal mesentery. Body wall. During 9 to 12 weeks, the pleural cavities enlarge and invade the lateral body walls. The body wall tissue at this time splits medially to form the peripheral parts of diaphragm outside that formed by the membranes that is pleuro pleura peritoneal membranes the extensive pleural cavities into the body wall form the costo diaphragmatic recesses innervation and portion diaphragm during the fourth week the septum lies opposite the upper cervical somites during fifth week nerves from Cervical spinal segments that is C3, C4 and C5 grow into the septum and form the phrenic nerve. These nerves pass to the septum via the pleuropericardial membrane. Thus the nerves lie in the fibrous pericardium. Rapid growth of the dorsal embryo body compared to the ventral part results in an apparent descent of the both the diaphragm and the nerves by 6th week to thoracic somatic levels. By 8th week, the dorsal part of diaphragm lies at the level of the first lumbar vertebra. Thus, its nerve has been carried down from the cervical region. Then we go to congenital malformations. Congenital diaphragmatic hernia. It is a common malformation in the newborn seen one in uh, 2200 births and usually as a postolateral defect of diaphragm. It usually results from defective formation or fusion of the pleuroperitoneal membranes which normally separate the sub pleural and peritoneal cavities. Defect is usually unilateral with a large opening called the foramen of Bokhtalak in the postolateral part of diaphragm. It is seen more often on the left side as a result of an early closure of the right pleuroperitoneal opening. If pleuroperitoneal membrane is not fused when the intestines return to the abdomen from umbilical cord in 10th week, the intestines may pass into the chest. Then coming to other anomalies, congenital hiatal hernia. It is rare. In this abdominal viscera herniate through a large esophageal hiatus or opening. It is usually an acquired lesion seen in adult type. Then we have esophageal hernia. If esophagus is shorter than normal, part of the stomach may appear in the thorax and get constricted as it passes through the enlarged esophageal hernia. Retrosternal and parasternal hernia of Morgagni. It is rare defect between sternum and the sternocostal parts of diaphragm. A small peritoneal sac with intestinal loop is often seen in the chest. Congenital eventuation of the diaphragm. It is rare when half of the diaphragm is defective, has defective muscles and balloons up into the chest cavity with upward displacement of abdominal contents. Thank you.